Hello and good morning. Thanks for joining me again this morning as we think about uh, Paul's third missionary journey uh, in Asia Minor, the Roman pro province of Asia Minor, which is Turkey uh, in this day and age. And we're going to be thinking about Paul and Peter and others' missionary journey uh, throughout this province and how they spread the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, after Christ's death, resurrection and ascension. And uh, a few years ago, Bernadette and I, and I think Jennifer was there as well, our daughter, decided that we needed a holiday, so we went to the beautiful turquoise coast resorts of Turkey and uh, soon became tired of lying in the sun. I'm not a lying in the sun kind of person. Uh, although Bernadette does like that. Uh, anyway, we did a bit of that and then we hired a car and we drove up the coast to visit the ancient city of Ephesus, the ruins of Ephesus that uh, are spoken about in the Bible and the scriptures. And uh, this was one of the churches mentioned in the scriptures which was planted by Aquila and Priscilla uh, and Paul and his fellow apostles. It was just a few hours drive from the hotel where we were staying so the scenery was wonderful, the roads were smooth and there was beautiful rolling hills. You think about Ephesus and you think maybe it was a kind of desert area. Well some of it is but the city itself is right by the coast and nowadays it's uninhabited uh, but uh, a beautiful drive. I love road trips. So we arrived at Ephesus and uh, it was one of the largest cities in the Roman Empire. I think it's one of the, the five largest in the Roman Empire and uh, it's not used nowadays of course and it fell out of use but it, uh, in its day it was very important for sea trade until after several earthquakes and then it was invaded two or three times and uh, its buildings pulled down and rebuilt and uh, eventually I think the Ephesians gave up on it and uh, left it. But the uh, Austrian archaeologists in the 19th century started visiting and rebuilding this uh, and uh, excavating the city of Ephesus. Now, we learned that after Christ died and rose again, Christians uh, had to flee from Jerusalem and that happened around 37 AD when there was persecution and many settled in Ephesus. It was a large anonymous city where Christians could kind of lose themselves and no one would persecute them. So, and it was also a very cosmopolitan city. There were Greeks there as well as Romans, uh, there was all kinds of people from around that Middle Eastern uh, area and uh, many faiths, many nations, many backgrounds all under the control of the Roman Empire. And the Romans did allow people to um, practice their religion freely uh, as long as they um, paid respect to the Roman gods. And during lockdown and after Eastern Pentecost we have already explored how the church got started in Jerusalem and then spread out over the Roman Empire after the coming of the Holy Spirit which empowered Paul and Peter and Barnabas and James and, and others working to spread the good news right around that area. And after Jerusalem had heard about it and witnessed the things that happened during Jesus' death on the cross and then his resurrection and ascension, the good news had to be spread that the Messiah had come and been crucified and died and rose again and ascended, uh, declaring the promise of eternal life to all those who would follow him. And now, here's Bernadette and I arrived at this ancient city, these ruins, of Ephesus where the apostles had walked and planted churches and spread the good news. And you know this ancient city is stunning. 
we saw the roads where Paul and Barnabas and others would have walked. And we saw signs of the presence of Christians by the crosses, engraved into the stonework above doorways, and in tombs and caskets. And we also saw signs of the other gods worshipped there by the Romans and the Greeks and other nations. The Greeks, for instance, worshipped Nike. If you've got a trainer, it's maybe got Nike written on it. Uh, a Roman goddess and uh, Diana, um, or in the Greek Artemis, it seemed to be kind of the same god in Greek and Roman. Um, and uh, Paul introduced the Ephesians to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the very Son of God. And many of the Ephesians listened, starting with Aquila and Priscilla and the church blossomed and I'm sure Paul did as he always did, went to the synagogue and started off there where there was a knowledge of the God of Israel and built upon these foundations telling them that the long-awaited Messiah had come spreading the good news and uh, I need to read you now from the books, book of Acts part of an account of Paul's visit to Ephesus. We're going to read in Acts chapter 19 and we're starting from verse 21. Let's hear the word of God. This is about the riot at Ephesus. After these things had happened, Paul made up his mind to travel through Macedonia and Achaia and go on to Jerusalem. After I go there, he said, I must also see Rome. So he sent Timothy and Erastus, two of his helpers, to Macedonia, where he spent more time in the province of Asia. It was at this time that there was serious trouble in Ephesus because of the way of the Lord. A certain silversmith named Demetrius made silver models of the temple uh, of the goddess Artemis. And his business brought a great deal of profit to the workers. In fact, one of the souvenirs that you can buy today at Ephesus in Turkey are models of Artemis. So uh, she seems to live on in some shape or form there. So as souvenirs. So he called them all together with others whose work was like theirs and said to them, Men, you know that our prosperity comes from this work. Now you can see and hear for yourselves what this fellow Paul is doing. He says that man-made gods are not gods at all, and he succeeded in convincing many people, both here in Ephesus and in, nearby, in, in nearly the whole province of Asia. There is the danger then that this business of ours will get a bad name. Not only that, but there's also the danger that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will come to mean nothing, and that our greatness will be destroyed. The goddess worshipped by everyone in Asia and in all the world. And as the crowd heard these words, they became furious and started shouting, Great is Artemis of Ephesus. The uproar spread through, throughout the whole city. The mob says, seized Gaius and Aristarchus, two Macedonians who were travelling with Paul, and rushed with them to the theatre. This is the great theatre at Ephesus. Paul himself wanted to go before the crowd, but the believers would not let him. Some of the provincial authorities who were his friends also sent him a message, begging him not to show himself in the theatre. Meanwhile, the whole meeting was in an uproar. Some people were shouting one thing, others were shouting something else, because most of them did not even know why they'd come together. Some of the people concluded that Alexander was responsible since the Jews made him go up to the front. Then Alexander motioned with his hand for the people to be silent. And he tried to make a speech of defence, but when they recognised that he was a Jew, they all shouted together the same thing for two hours. Great is Artemis of Ephesus. At last the town clerk was able to calm the crowd. Fellow Ephesians, he said, everyone knows that the city of Ephesus is the keeper of the temple of the great Artemis and of the sacred stone that fell from heaven. 
Nobody can deny these things. So then you must calm down and not do anything reckless. You've brought these men here even though they've not robbed temples or said evil things about our goddess. If Demetrius and his workers have an accusation against anyone, we have the authorities and the regular days of court. Charges can be made there. But if there is something more that you want, it will have to be settled in a legal meeting of citizens. For after what has happened today, there is a danger that we will be accused of a riot. There is no excuse for all this uproar, and we would not be able to give a good reason for it. That is to the Roman authorities. After saying this, he dismissed the meeting. Amen. So, here's a situation where Paul has stirred up all the silversmiths who are going to be losing business because there's no image of our living God to worship. And Demetrius saw his business under threat. Now I'm going to show you uh, some photos from our trip. It sounds like we're showing holiday photos here, but I think you'll find these very interesting. So here then are some photos from our trip and just to familiarise you with the area here's the map of Paul's journey and his third journey starting off at Syria, Syrian Antioch because there's two Antiochs so don't get confused there's Pisidian Antioch and that's where he went from the first Antioch and then through Phygria into Ephesus where he stayed there for three years. It was a lovely road trip, it was a lovely drive through the Turkish um, countryside and we see the lovely uh, well-kept roads in Turkey even as an Islamic country it's very well looked after. President Erdogan is doing a great job in many ways uh, although obviously he attracts some criticism we get to Ephesus, the city itself, and uh, this is the site that meets us, these incredible ruins in Ephesus. That's the main street, and here are some other buildings. You can see the lovely um, stonework that still remains there in Ephesus to this day. Uh, next we come on the Celsus Library, and it's a two-story library. Uh, the first large building like that of its kind and uh, that's Bernadette and myself standing in the doorway there. Um, so you can see a very beautiful, very ornate library. Uh, here's some of the ornate stonework in the porch of the library. A lot of time and effort has gone into that uh, as, as well. Um, the shops or houses would have looked like this and they're being dug out of the side of the mountain and uh, rebuilt to some degree um, and then there's a street moving away from the Celsus library which you can just see there on the left hand side towering above everything else and this is another street and it's obviously got pillars up the side of it so it's been quite some thoroughfare at one time and um, this is a picture of the Roman god Hermes with uh, a, a ram that uh, perhaps is taking it to sacrifice. So there's still quite a lot of artwork around. Uh, and uh, something that we can't seem to get to grips with in this country. But the Ephesians had 2000 years ago public toilets. And uh, quite open and very public. But they're still there to this day. And uh, uh, I think we can learn some lessons from this. When we came round the corner there was a group of 20 German tourists all sitting on these toilets in Ephesus posing for a photo. And uh, it was quite amusing. They seemed quite embarrassed. Um, this is the theatre, the great theatre at Ephesus. There's two theatres. 
But this is the one where they dragged the Apostle Paul to. Uh, this is the one that he almost managed to make a speech at, but uh, he was stopped by the crowd. And here's a view of it. You can see the acoustics are very good. And there was a place down the front as well for the orchestra. And um, all kinds of plays and uh, things were put on in this great theatre. Uh, this is another view of the theatre and you can see it goes away down towards the sea right at the top of your, the, the screen there and the sea has receded of course due to earthquakes and this is what uh, shut down the city, much of the city because the harbour used to be just not far at all from the great theatre. And uh, we see in this next slide a little house just outside Ephesus. And this is the house of the Virgin Mary, because the Virgin Mary also stayed at Ephesus. It's hard to think uh, of Mary being elsewhere other than Jerusalem. But as I said earlier, many of the Jews and Christians were expelled from Jerusalem. Sorry, the Christians, I should say, were expelled from Jerusalem. And many came to Ephesus. John came, Paul came, uh, Barnabas came. Uh, Peter, I think, stayed at Ephesus for a short time as well. Certainly Paul stayed for three years. And John, the disciple whom Jesus loved and was given charge of his mother by Christ from the cross, came and stayed outside Ephesus in the country. And we walked up and we saw this lovely little house. It probably didn't look like that in Mary's time. It would be a probably a wooden structure but now it's been built up uh, and it's a little church now but some of the original uh, fittings are there, the hearths all still there and uh, some of it would in fact be the original house of the Virgin Mary. So back to our story.